Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking, and this morning I'm looking at a book from Edward Elgar Publishing. It's an interesting book on the law of remedies and the economics of remedies, called, of course, The Economics of Remedies. And it's a series of um, on articles from law journals, reviews and so forth, edited by Ariel Porat. And it's part of the um, Economic Approaches to Law series, which is very relevant at this particular time with the economic downturn in Europe. This is the book here. You can see the front of it, the side, and then you can see the back with the testimonials and all the commentaries. The book's heavy. It runs to something approaching, uh, let's have a look, something, yeah, just under 700 pages. And you can get an idea from it. Of, for instance, that's the Californian Law Review there, an article on remedies. A lot of it's American. But, of course, it has a fairly substantial persuasive influence on what we do here. That's the Yale Law uh, Review, the Law Journal, rather, and so forth. And you've got things like uh, flow charts as well, that sort of stuff, diagrams. And what you have at the front is a very useful introduction from Professor uh, Porat. We've written a review on the web and given it the title If you practice in or are studying contract and tort, read about the remedies and that's very important because I'll come on to that. This book itself of course is a collection of both classic and recent articles and essays on the subject of the economies of remedies in tort and contract law a subject often overlooked by law students and those taking the bar exams, as I've found out as a tutor and uh, examiner. Um, one of the areas which is always a must is to remember what remedies you seek to um, try to achieve. The book is part of the Economic Approaches to Law series published by Elgar, and the work examines and summarises much of the latest research and thinking on issues focusing on those remedies which emanate from actions in contract and tort themselves. And of course the important thing for us as barristers is to remember the interface between the two when you have uh, an action in the uh, courts. Um, so Professor Porat, who holds uh, the post of Distinguished Visiting Professor of Law at U the University of Chicago, points out in his insightful introduction that even though remedies are integral to the study of contracts and torts, the law of remedies is not quite self-evidently an independent field. He says, most law school curricula do not include a remedies course. That's an interesting point because the bar vocational course of course does, but he says of course this is the law schools themselves. He adds that there are many remedy issues common to both contracts and torts, yes that's true, as well as those that diverge. So we think the book is very welcome for what it points out. It serves to shed light, of course, on and explore in some depths the remedies that are actually available, uh, focusing mainly, of course, on contract and tort. And what we have here are 18 learned articles written by prominent contributors and published in highly regarded law publications, all in one uh, publication from Elgar. The fact is that all this formidable scholarship has been carefully selected and incorporated into one handy volume. Let me just conclude by saying it's meticulously footnoted throughout, and the book is certainly a treasure trove of resource material for further research in this field, that's if you want to explore further. You may wish to probe the distinction, of course, between property rules and liability rules, or the relative efficacy of damages and specific performance. And as Posner from the University of Chicago says, this book should be on the bookshelf of all scholars who write in this important area. We agree wholeheartedly, so thank you to all concerned for an excellent publication. Bye-bye.